for joining us on Behind the Spotlight. I'm your host, Crystal Lampett. And if you've never heard the term Nightmaricana, Abandoned Bells is here to help define that. We're going to learn all about it, but I want to make sure to kick it off with a song of theirs so you can get a taste for their style. Uh, so tell me a little bit more about Little Coyote. So Little Coyote, it was um, inspired by the book Women Who Run With the Wolves okay. and the story of this woman who lives in the desert and um, she gathers wolf bones and she sings over these bones and these wolves come to life and as they run they turn into women running wild and free. So it's just all about women empowerment and just running free and um, getting going back to our instincts. What an interesting metaphor too. I'm interested in hearing this. All right. Well, thank you so much for being here. Let's go ahead and kick it off with Little Coyote. This is Abandoned Bells. Take it away. Little Coyote by Abandoned Bells. And so you were telling me a little bit more about the inspiration. It was sort of a, a female empowerment song for you. How did you come up with the idea? Because it's interesting that there are there are bones in it and you mm -hmm. have kind of a special connection with bones. Yeah. Sounds really creepy when I say it that way. <laughs> yeah. Well, I do. So when I was reading the book, I was just really inspired by the story of Laloba. Um, and that's the, the woman's name. And um, I, so I work with bones, I make jewelry with bones, and I work at Oracle Natural Science in the crossroads, and that's all bones and taxidermy. So when I read the story, I felt like really connected to it. Wow. And I just saw myself as a little girl, just like a woman girl, 
just traveling through the desert to just find wisdom from Baloba. Interesting. What what's with the fascin fascination with bones? Have you always? Yeah, I, I think it all stems from it's it's interesting. I like to tell people, you know, scientists and um, technical laborers like they their hobbies are usually art. And I feel like as an artist, my hobby is science. And when mm -hmm. like growing up, um, I would get lost in the woods and just come home with like, you know, with, you know, the shirt with like a bunch of rocks <laughs> and bones coming yeah. inside. And so I've always collected rocks and bones and I still dream about being a paleontologist someday yeah, you know, like, like traveling the world and exploring yeah, new yeah. things and yeah that is pretty amazing well mm -hmm. i it, it is interesting too because i find that a lot of our artists typically have other artistic endeavors and and, and tyson you mm -hmm. also do tell me a little bit more about your your painting uh, no, i'm primarily just a visual artist do oil painting do some watercolor uh, done band posters that way We've done band poster illustrations for you know, 25 years now so do you feel like it's it contributes i mean how how do you guys work with these you know art forms and then also don't you feel like it kind of contributes to your oh, music yeah. and yeah. Your creativity and it, yes. i think it contributes and also there's times where like what i want to do with a painting doesn't really want to come across but then it will translate through music or vice versa there'll be a song that we're working on that it doesn't seem to quite be clicking with me but then i'll go home and create a painting that works wonderfully for the, the concept, the idea of it, for me. Anyways. Yeah, no, that's so crazy. It's all about expression mm -hmm. and, and, and how you find a way to do that. And I, I, you know, I just, I love it. We just have so many awesome creative people in here. Now tell me a little bit more about how you guys got together because uh, Abandoned Bells is a, a fairly new, mm -hmm. uh, a fairly new band, right? Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah uh, Christoph and I had talked a couple of times um, years prior to this about trying to put together kind of a junkyard band, an odd sounding <laughs> band, and just scheduling just never worked out. And sure. then he called me up one day and said, if you're still wanting to do that, I've, um, I have this wonderful banjo player that I'd like to throw into the mix. Nice. And, uh, and we got together, I think it was November or December? I think it was December. Okay. I remember it being uh, cold. <laughs> and, you know, and it was the first time I'd met Terry it was that night, and everything just clicked really well. Great. That's good to hear. Well, we're glad to have you, and we're going to delve more into these guys' story here in a little bit. Stay with us. Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. I'm sitting here with Abandoned Bells. And I did promise you guys at the beginning that I would define the term Nightmaricana because you kind of coined this term. It's kind of a genre. Give me an idea of what it means. So, you know, you hear the term Americana and um, we've got a banjo <laughs> in the band. And so <laughs> everybody immediately thinks folk. Um, mm -hmm. And so what we were thinking about was that Southern Gothic sound. Um, uh, we, we call it Nightmaricana because we're drawing in from some folk traditions. Sure. And I'm playing the banjo claw hammer style, which is um Claw the, hammer style. Mm -hmm, okay. So it's like Appalachian hollering kind okay. of. Okay. Um, so we're melding that with a darker sound with Christoph's baritone and um, Tyson's drumming and just kind of creating this like, are we punk? Are we metal? Are mm -hmm. we um, shoegaze at times? So it's kind of like we're just melding a bunch of different worlds, but kind of keeping that dark undertone. There's, a, there, there's an edge. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're definitely metal. <laughs> so metal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, 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 yeah, there's, um, there's a, there's a, it's a dark sound. It's very different. It's very mm -hmm. unique, um, and and I like it. I like the beats. I like that it's so yeah. driving and different. Well, tell me about the banjo because, like you said, it, it typically is associated with very folksy. Yeah, yeah. Why why the why the banjo? I I feel like I've always connected to the banjo. I just um, when I I started playing it like four or five years ago, and when I picked it up, it was like. Oh, I get it. You know, just I've huh. always played guitar, and but I just felt like a, a strong connection. Um, and I just I love, I just love the sound. I love the history of it, and I just I don't know. I'm I'm a sucker for that old-fashioned sound, and so to to um, bring it into a band setting, I I 
it, you know, it's like I'm not just a folk artist and I feel like I'm so many different things and I'm kind of trying to figure out like how can I bring the banjo into these different realms that people don't normally hear the banjo. It's unexpected. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. It is. It's, a, it's an unexpected context. I yeah. I totally see why that would be interesting to you. And Tyson, were you, were you the same way with drums? Did you just pick up, pick up a pair of drumsticks one day and decide, like, this uh, is my thing? No, I think my mom was trying to find something for me to do one summer. Were you, were you a little troublemaker? I was. <laughs> and, Still are. Um, and so we went to a um, drum store and bought a snare drum. She got me signed up for drum lessons. and um, just A snare. So were you doing, um, like, marching band? Did you do drum line or anything um, in school? I tried it. Um, yeah. I didn't really get along very well with the <laughs> marching band people. Uh, <laughs> Too I, structured for you? Yeah. Somehow uh, I'm getting that vibe. <laughs> yeah. I, I found my home more with the theater department at my high school. So, oh. uh, I could see that because yeah. you, you do have a little bit more flexibility to be creative and express yeah. yourself. So yeah. was it? do you think it was like a, you have too much energy, let me find something for you to do? Um, it, it was either that or um, she was worried about what I would be doing unsupervised during Otherwise. the summer. So, yeah. you know, if I had something that I had to go do every week, she... She felt she felt better. I right. could see that. But but tell me about doing that. So because I have, a, I played the drums briefly mm. and yeah, very briefly. Um, uh, I did piano. I had the classic, you know, like I had this really strict piano teacher who would clip my nails for me. It was terrible. Mm. Like it was, it, it was <laughs> that awful. Sounds like a horrible experience. It was terrible. And um, and so, and then I did the flute in the marching band. So you know that that idea of like be here, march right. in beat. This is your cadence, like. Uh, it was hard. Like, I didn't like a lot of it. I like love music, band. and I came to love it more the better I got at it. But how did you make it so that it wasn't a duty or a chore to be um, a musician? I didn't, well, first of all, quit the high school band. Yeah, so you got out of that. <laughs> got, got out yeah. of that. Smart, smart guy. And then um, some friends of mine were putting together a, you know, mid 80s punk rock band mm -hmm. and they needed a drummer so i showed up and was horrible and <laughs> was immediately kicked out of the band and, no kidding. and um then a new friend of mine um jeff said hey let's join this band and let's do um, our own thing yeah and he and i've been playing together since 88 89 so. huh, wow uh, so it's just it was just a matter of finding the right fit right good people good style or something that you connect with right. and then it's not so much like you need to practice once right. a week you know yeah, that's the difficult thing yeah it became an excuse for jeff and i to hang out mm -hmm. and, um mm -hmm. you know just Sometimes you'd get together for practice and you would never play. Isn't that funny? Yeah. yeah you, but you're sitting there in front of your instrument or, you know, he's sure. got his instrument in his hand. But we'd just sit there and talk about the stuff that was going on. Absolutely. I, I think some people need that motivation almost like going to the gym. Mm -hmm. Like they say sometimes if you, can't, if you can't get yourself to the gym, it's kind of like, but you know what? Just go. Be around it. And mo more likely than not, you'll at least pick up a weight right. here and there. Or it's like it's like, expo it's right. like exposure therapy. Like, I don't know if I like this thing, but if I'm around it enough, maybe I'll get into the habit. Yeah. Or, or in your case, it, it sounds like it obviously became a, something that you love. Because right. you, you would not still be doing it unless, unless you loved it. Right. Um, and, and Terry, I know you had sort of an interesting journey into the music world. I know you do some of your own solo stuff as yeah. well. Um, you actually, were you going to go to UMKC or you did attend I UMKC? I did. So that's interesting. We're talking about structure. I spent... Um, I went through music school. I went uh, to UMKC Conservatory, and I have a degree in clarinet performance. So there you my go. goal when I came to Kansas City was to be in an orchestra. Now I'm in this like metal punk folk band. And, um, <laughs> huh. So when it comes to structure, like I'm all about that. <laughs> like, really? Yeah, because it's like you know, in school I had to practice my clarinet three to five hours a day, and like wow, and you felt it when you skipped a day. And, no kidding. Um, and the whole like teachers clipping your nails like it gets worse in college. <laughs> um, oh. It's a very rigid, oh. very strict. And um, but you said you you felt like you responded well to that. I did. I, I'm really good with structure, and I really like school. Um, uh, yeah, I I, I had responded well to it. But it's nice to be out and do my own thing. I think what it did was prepare me for now for like okay, I have these mm. dreams and goals and I need to be rigid and strict with my schedule in order to meet them. So I think that's school, um, going to like, 
boot camp for music yeah. was like... Um, it trained you. It trained me for how to deal when I get out of school. That's kind of, it's, that's nice to hear because so many of us, I think, have college degrees and we're like, never using this. Yeah. Um, or, <laughs> yeah. Or, you know, but maybe yeah. from a disciplinary mm -hmm. context, you know, it, it did prepare you for the real world or, yeah. or your, your world um, yeah. in the future. So it sounds like it did help you. It did. Um, but how did you get into the, were you still playing the banjo this whole time? Yes. And then you kind of like yeah. got thrown in there and. Um, well, I was always playing clarinet through, you know, I started in fifth grade, like every little kid. Um, but I went through and I, you know, was taking lessons in college and playing in youth orchestras. But in high school, I went and saw this singer-songwriter at like an open mic, and I was like, I want to do that now. Huh. So I picked up a guitar and, you know, started delving deep with um, music and just listening to, you know, expanding my ears, and I taught myself guitar, and, you know, I was that 16-year-old that kid that's like, go away, Mom, I'm playing my guitar. Yeah. So, like, that was me. Um, so, but through college, like, it wasn't um, a priority to me, but I was still writing songs, still kind of playing shows. Um, huh. But, like, it wasn't a priority until I got out of college and was like, yeah, I have to wait for like somebody to leave an orchestra to get an or audition and ah. it's kind of like the Supreme Court it's yes. like I and I don't have time for that and um, but but for some reason like songwriting just started to creep back up more into my life and so um, I started writing more songs and sadly I haven't touched my clarinet in a while <laughs> but um, but I still like even though I'm not using my clarinet professionally I still feel like you know, school has helped, like I'm still doing music and it's, yes. it's really good to say like, I am actually using my degree. Absolutely. Oh, you are. Mm -hmm. And it, it sounds, and it obviously worked out for you mm -hmm. because now you, you're on this whole other creative journey that still allows you to use your, your musical talents and, mm -hmm. and it's expanded, you know, yeah. the way I see yeah. it, it sounds mm -hmm. like you guys have both um, expanded your talents and your, and your reach and you're still doing yeah. something that you love and that is creative and you're working on, on your debut EP and album mm -hmm. and you have all sorts of exciting things coming up so thank yes. you guys so much for, for you. sharing your time with us Thanks we will be right back after this don't go anywhere Welcome back to Behind the Spotlight. We've been hanging out with Abandoned Bells tonight, and we do have one more song from them. Tell me about Dark House a little bit more. Uh, Dark House is about the Edward Gorey House in Yarmouth okay. Fort, Massachusetts. Oh, okay. I don't know. I'm not familiar with this. Uh, Edward Gorey was an author and illustrator that died in 2000. Okay. And um, I got to live in his house for about three years. What? And it kind of became the archetype of what I eventually want to have in my life. So. I like this. Okay, we're going to listen to Dark House by Abandoned Bells. Take it away.
welcome.